Namaskar. Hello and welcome to NCRT's live phone in program. My name is Tanvi Khurana and in this science session, we are here with the topic cell division. This is the second part of the same topic. If you have not seen the first part, then I would request you to please watch it. It's already on our YouTube channel NCERT Official. You can watch the first session because these two are interlinked and uh, we want you to understand the concept. That's why it's important for you to watch both the sessions. So we have an expert with us. Let's meet her. She is Dr. Priyanka Varshane. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Tanvi, ma'am. Thanks a lot. I thank NCRT for giving me this opportunity, uh, give, giving this platform so that I can share my knowledge with the learners. So I'm really grateful to you as well as NCRT for this. Thank you uh, so much. Ma'am, uh, I would like to start the discussion uh, in the further time uh, what I had done in the previous class. Okay. So uh, should I start? I'll just huh? introduce you to our viewers and then we'll begin. Yeah. Uh, so, ma'am is an assistant professor from Lady Irvin College, Delhi University. So, um, like ma'am said that uh, she has a lot to talk about. All the class 9 students, if you have any questions regarding the cell division, then please share it with us on our email ID which is dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in and also you are watching us live at the moment on PME Vidya channel number 9. So um, let's go to ma'am and let's ask her that uh, what exactly was there in the first part, uh, the ones uh, she explained to all of you and uh, what is in store for today's session. So over to you ma'am. Thank you. A very good afternoon students. I am sure you are doing good. You are studying nicely and I will be continuing the discussion with my previous discussion with you. We had this discussion on the concept of cell division. NCRT textbooks class 9th. Uh, there is a chapter number 5 cell division. And uh, in this I had talked about the concept of cell division and then I had talked about uh, the I would say basic concept of cell. I had discussed with you about cell, cellular structure, cell organelles, we had talked about the structure of nucleus, we had talked about what are chromatins and what are chromosomes, what is DNA and what are genes. And we had also tried to understand the relationship between all these things. After that, I had discussed uh, certain important things with you, uh, which were regarding uh, the chromosomes in the human beings. So when we have understood uh, how and what are the chromosomes and they are present inside the nucleus, this is also very important to understand that in the human beings, in every somatic cell, we have 46 chromosomes. So I would like to take your attention uh, to this when you can see that there are 46 chromosomes and they are in 23 pairs. So there are actually 23 pairs of chromosomes that we had understood and if we see the last pair of chromosome that is the 23rd pair of chromosome, it is actually XX in case of female and XY in case of male. So that is where the difference between the chromosomes uh, which are present in between male as well as female is there. So this is the last pair of chromosome, 23rd chromosome which creates a difference. So uh, in the previous class we had also talked about the concept of sex determination and if we have understood the difference between the chromosomes of male and female it becomes very easier for us to realize at the time of sexual reproduction in all the sexually reproduction uh, reproducing organisms and specifically in case of human beings we see that there is a production of sperm in males and the production of eggs in females so at the time of production of X in female, both the X will be having, of course it is only the one egg and three polar bodies are formed, so they all the X will be having X chromosome because there is no difference. While in the case of male, there will be two types of sperms, one sperm will be having X chromosome while the other sperm will be having Y chromosome and that is where the difference comes. If the X chromosome of the father is crossing or maybe we can say the combining fertili fertilization is there if X chromosome of father is actually meeting the X chromosome of mother then it will be a daughter if X chromosome uh, if X chromosome of mother is meeting the Y chromosome of father then it will be son so that's how there is a possibility uh, I would say 50 percent possibility is there of having the girl child and the male uh, boy child. So this was something that we had discussed and I am sure you would be clear about it. 
moving ahead we can see that's why the role of uh, meiosis comes here like in the last class when we discussed uh, about the cell division i had tried to discuss the concept of mitosis with you mitosis is there which is happening in the somatic cells while the meiosis is the type of cell division which happens in the germ cells so when we are talking about the sperm and ova that is where we see from the germs from the sexual uh, organs there is uh, the process of meiosis which is taking place and sperms are being formed in case of male and eggs are being formed in case of female so the number of chromosomes is getting half as we can see from 46 to 23 irrespective of the fact this is egg or sperm both the germ cells or gametes will be having 23 chromosomes and when these 23 chromosome from female combined with the 23 chromosome of male they again form the 46 chromosome and that's what we say zygote there is a uh, further division of cells there is a multiplication of cell that is the mitotic division and embryo is formed fetus is formed and after approximately 9 months a newborn baby is formed now before starting the concept we would like to highlight again i had discussed with you haploid and diploid this is very important students to understand the concept of haploid and diploid because many times we get confused and we don't know what is the exact meaning this is very simple we have 46 chromosomes so 46 chromosomes are arranged in a pair so there is a pair of 23 chromosome and one set is known as 23 chromosome so 23 chromosomes are actually forming one set and when they make a pair then we have two sets in human being so all the somatic cells all the uh, body organs be it skin cells be it lung cells be it liver cells they are diploid in nature because they have a they have a pair of chromosomes so means 2n n is the one set and 2n is the pair so we have a pair of 23 chromosome but while we come to the discussion of sperms and ova we realize that there are only 23 chromosomes means only one set of chromosome is there in the cell so the cell which is having one set of chromosome that is 23 chromosomes is known as haploid while the cell which is having a pair of set that is two sets is known as diploid cell 2n we had talked about the cell division how the cells multiply themselves and many various cells are formed from the parent cell so we know be it the case of mitosis or meiosis there is a cycle g1s and g2 phase and s is the phase where the multi uh, the replication of dna takes place so dna doubles itself at the stage of s phase of interface so we see after replication the cell enters be it mitosis or meiosis so if it is the case of somatic cells body uh, cells then of course it will be mitosis but while it is coming to the germ cells the sexual reproduction process is going on then it will be the meiosis here we can see the replication how one chromosome is forming two chromosomes we can we call it chromatids and how they are attached with each other so so if you count the number of chromosome that is one but two chromatids are there it means the amount of dna has duplicated this was something that we had discussed about mitosis where the chromosomes all the if we take the example of human beings all the 46 chromosomes will be there they will condense then they will arrange themselves at the center of the cell and then here we are talking about the nucleus inside the nucleus at the equatorial plate they will arrange themselves in the anaphase the sister chromatids will be separated and they will start moving towards the pole in telophase nuclear membrane will form again and simultaneously the process of cytokinesis means cell membrane will start forming so this is the conceptual foundation of what we are going to discuss today let's move ahead without wasting your time i have tried to build up the foundations students we already know about the significance let's start meiosis so as we can see meiosis is a type of cell division which takes place in the germ cells in the sexually reproducing organisms it helps in the production of cells which are haploid in nature so that at the time of reproduction when one male gamete and one female gamete combine they are in a position to resume the exact number of chromosomes in the new organism and there is no multiplication of the uh, chromosomes so the number of chromosome remains same in all the organisms of course it is also very important uh, to understand meiosis has a very important role to play because meiosis introduces variation among us how we see if we are not the identical twins no two siblings are same we are the children of same parents but we are not same no two siblings are same there is always a difference there is always a variation except the fact if we are 
identical twins because in case of identical twins there is the division of one zygote into two and then two uh, fetus and uh, newborn babies are developed but in other cases if egg is different sperms are different no two sperms are same no two eggs are same and this variation is because of the certain processes which are taking place in the meiosis so this is very interesting to understand the process of meiosis now i would like to give you an overview as we can see meiosis is actually made up of two substages meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 in meiosis 1 there are four substages that is prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 and telophase 1 when the telophase 1 is over it moves towards meiosis 2 and again there are four substages which we call as prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and telophase 2 and after that cyto cytokinesis takes place cell wall formation takes place and four cells are formed so this is the overall process now let's try to understand each and every stage of meiosis in detail with clarity first thing meiosis 1 when we talk about meiosis students let me tell you there is a lot of confusion uh, and i would say uh, doubts also and lot of questions are there with regard to the exact processes which are taking place in the meiosis because we know that there is one thing mitosis we know there is one thing meiosis so there is a lot of confusion with regard to homologous chromosomes there is a lot of confusion with regard to chromatids and what is exactly happening in the meiosis and what is the difference if we understand the process of meiosis with clarity with lot of patience we would be able to understand what is the exact difference so first thing which we need to understand in case of meiosis that in meiosis 1 homologous chromosomes means the pair of chromosomes which are having the alternate features for the same character when we talk about homologous chromosome students we need to know as we have seen there are 23 pairs of chromosome in the human beings if we talk about chromos pair number 1 chromosome pair number 1 what does it mean it means it will be having one pair of chromosome which will be having alternate characteristics for the same feature for example eye color so if one chromosome is having the dna for black eye color then the other might have black also colorless also brown also green also any other so but both the segments of those chromosomes the pair of chromosome are defining one feature that is the color of eye so here it is very important to understand in case of meiosis when we will be moving toward the end of meiosis telophase 1 which i just showed you then there will be separation of homologous pairs means one chromosome will go to the one direction one daughter cell and the other uh, chromosome of the homologous pair will go to the other daughter cell this is something which we need to remember when we are talking about meiosis 1 and yes in meiosis 1 there are four substages prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 and telophase 1 let's try to understand each and every stage in detail this is again the process i have already told you i will not be taking much time we know this is the cell cycle and after g1 s g2 phase the cell will enter into the meiosis meiosis 1 meiosis 2 let's start with prophase 1 now this is important to understand in prophase 1 first of all there will be condensation of chromatin into chromosome chromatin fibers are dispersed in the cell and they are condensing and forming the chromosome but along with that there will be a pairing also means homologous chromosomes will come together and they will make a pair after that there is a exchange of dna material in between the two there is a crossing over and that's where we say that the change or variation in the coming generation comes no two individuals are same because there is a exchange of dna material in a random way different stages of dna are exchanged in between a pair of homologous chromosomes we will be understanding this in detail and how exactly the process of variation is introduced so let's start when we see the prophase 1 this is very uh, i would say elaborate because uh, prophase 1 is again made up of five parts leptotene zygotene pectin diplotene and diakinesis we can see that in the diagram also i have tried to give you one diagram and in this diagram students we can see very clearly in leptotene chromosomes are there but can you see in each chromosome there are two strands which are coming out means dna has already duplicated itself that is why in each chromosome there are two sister chromatids 
though they are attached they are together but actually the amount of dna is double means this is 2c the amount of dna is known as c if it replicates itself it is known as 2c that's also sometimes confusion we don't know what is the difference between c and 2c n and 2n n and 2n i have already told you c and 2c let me tell you c is the amount of dna in chromosome 2c is if it has replicated itself so in this leptotene stage we can say dna replication has taken place and dna amount has doubled though it is together in the form of sister chromatids and these chromosomes are there in the nucleus now when we move towards zygotene there is a pairing of homologous chromosomes so we can see like say uh, chromosome pair number 1 pair number 2 pair number 3 similarly so if we have 46 chromosomes all the 23 pairs will come together and they will form the homologous uh, pair and then when they are together they are known as dyads dyads means pair they are together and then when we move towards the pegatin you can see uh, we have tried to show you one chromosome with pink color and the other chromosome with blue color and we can also see there is a an overlapping of the chromatids non sister chromatids they are not sister chromatids they are non sister chromatids means they are from two different chromosomes they are overlapping each other so they are actually forming the cross and this process is known as crossing over there is a recombination of gna uh, dna the simple thing that we can understand is that the dna will be broken at that space where we have crossing over and then again it will be recombined to the other chromosome the other uh, in the pair the other chromosome so there will be an exchange of dna material after the exchange of dna material the, the homologous pair starts separating except at the point where the crossing over has taken place we can see can you see the difference between the packetin and diplotin when we reach towards diplotin then chromosomes have started going apart but yes they are still attached at the place where the crossing over has taken place and this is known as chiasmata is structure ko we hum kehte hain chiasmata so this is known as chiasmata towards the end of prophase 1 there is a diakinesis when the exchange of dna material in between the non sister chromatids has taken place and now they have moved apart as separate chromosomes of course with two chromatids so this is uh, prophase 1 so all the mixing up of genes all the variation is actually happening in the prophase 1 of meiosis primarily we have seen that and it may be random the lower portion the middle portion the upper portion any portion can be exchanged from one another so one variation will come at this stage now we will see there is another variation which comes what is that first thing we have already seen the process of crossing over uh, for the clarity i have tried to show you this that how uh, certain portions we have tried to show the genes a b c of the homologous chromosomes capital a is for one chromosome and small a small b small c for the another chromosome and how they are exchanging the dna material the similar we can see in context of cell inside the nucleus how one chromosome has been shown with the red color and the other chromosome has been shown with the blue color and how they are getting attached to each other at certain points and how they are changing the dna material so after that there is a stage known as metaphase 1 metaphase 1 we need to understand what is happening so the change which is happening is that all the chromosomes in homologous pairs will arrange themselves at the equatorial plate so we have seen this is the nuclear region the central portion is known as equatorial plate we already know and towards the pole is there is a microtubules which are getting attached to the chromosomes so these chromosomes have arranged themselves the homologous pairs have arranged themselves at the equatorial plate and they are being attached to the polar body the poles with the help of microtubules so this is the metaphase stage at the anaphase stage we see these chromosomes start moving towards the poles there is a pull there is a pull the homologous pairs are started uh, have started getting apart so what we started we started with the meiosis by saying that in the meiosis one primarily this is the homologous pair of chromosome which will get apart so in a pair of two chromosomes homologous chromosome one chromosome will go to one side and the other chromosome will go to other side and similar is something which we are seeing in anaphase 1 in the pair of homologous chromosome one chromosome is moving towards the one pole and the other chromosome is moving toward the other pole now i will take a pause of one second here students try to focus we had tried to show one chromosome with blue color and the other chromosome with red color and there was an exchange of material we can see the tip portion of the chromosome but this is not always that all the blues will go together and all the reds will go together it may chromosomes may arrange themselves in any manner 
ब्लू ब्लू मे बी टूगेदर रेड रेड मे बी टूगेदर टू ब्लू वन रेड मे बी टूगेदर टू रेड वन ब्लू मे बी टूगेदर सो लॉर्ड ऑफ परम्यूटेशन कॉम्बिनेशन इज देयर एंड वी रियली डोंट नो इन वॉट कॉम्बिनेशन दीज क्रोमोसोम्स विल बी मूविंग टूअर्ड द वन पोल एंड दैट्स हेयर द सेकेंड प्लेस ऑफ वेरिएशन कम्स so lot of variation is coming first was coming at the stage of crossing over the second is coming at the stage of how the chromosomes are arranging themselves at the equatorial plate and how they are moving towards the daughter cell last stage of meiosis 1 is telophase 1 and cytokinesis why i have taken it together because when telophase 1 is happening cytokinesis also starts simultaneously what is the meaning at telophase the chromosomes will arrive at the opposite pole of the cell nuclear membrane will start uh, forming and along with that cytokinesis will happen it means the cell wall will also start forming and the one nucleus will start forming into the two and again the cell cell membrane will also be constricted towards the center and one cell will be divided into two you can see this process here we are seeing there is a constriction from both the sides it means that the two uh, cells are being formed and cell membrane is also getting formed and slowly and slowly we will see that two cells are formed in one go we can see prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 and telophase 1 along with the cytokinesis in this diagram where prophase 1 we can see the pairing and the crossing press crossing over in the metaphase 1 we can see the arrangement of chromosomes at the equatorial plate anaphase 1 we can see moving towards the pole and telophase 1 we see the finalization towards the formation of two cells so students uh, this was the process of uh, meiosis 1 i thought ma'am that it will not be possible to take both the uh, processes of meiosis meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 in one class so for the sake of better clarity today i have taken meiosis 1 in the next class i would like to take meiosis 2 with the students along with the comparative analysis of mitosis and meiosis sure um before leaving ma'am can i ask you a question yeah sure so in meiosis uh, can you explain the equational division and reductional division very good question ma'am uh, i think uh, this question was there in our mind also when we were students uh, and there is a lot of confusion mm -hmm. if we go to different websites different study material many times students end up getting confused yeah. so let me clarify it's very simple okay. equational means same hmm. reductional means getting half so when we talk about cell division mm. in case of mitosis the amount of dna remains the same even in the daughter cells we say two cells are being formed from one cell but the amount of dna is same so this is equational division okay. the amount of dna will remain same mm. first dna will replicate itself make it double mm. then will get divided into two so that the amount of dna is same in both the cells this is equational division mm. now when you come to meiosis In meiosis, there are actually two sub stages, two parts: meiosis one and meiosis two. Hmm. Meiosis one, which we have just studied in today's class, we could see that actually the homologous chromosomes are first making the pair, yeah. and then they are getting separated. Hmm. So one cell will be having twenty-three chromosomes, okay. and the other cell will be having twenty-three chromosomes. Right. While we started with the forty-six chromosomes, so the number of chromosome is getting half okay. in two daughter cells. It means the number of chromosomes is getting reduced. Hmm. so this is reductional division okay this so meiosis 1 essentially in meiosis meiosis 1 is reductional division because at the end of meiosis 1 two daughter cells are formed but each cell is having 23 uh, chromosomes and of course one set so from 2n to n hmm. we are going so this is reductional division all right this makes a lot more sense and the confusion has been clear thank you thank you so much for being here for this wonderful explanation Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you to all the students, to all the viewers, and uh, this was the first part, as in the second part of cell division, but it is yet not complete. The third division, the third part of cell division, will be here very, very soon, and you'll be updated about it. So keep your questions ready and keep on sending it to us on the email ID. It's dth dot class nine at the rate c i e t dot n i c dot i n. Thank you so much for watching this session. I am sure you got all the answers which you were expecting. Keep on watching these sessions. Next session is Sanskrit, and जहाँ हम बातचीत करेंगे पर्यावरण पर. तो आप अपने सवाल तैयार रखिएगा और हमें भेज भी सकते हैं. अपना ख्याल रखिएगा. Namaste.